Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Sober Lab, and today will be another video about TrueNAS, exactly. Some, pre some people start to ask me, Alan, I like the idea for TrueNAS, I wanted to implement in my company, or in my house, or in the place that I work, or in different areas, but uh, my concern is, I want that some users have a specific access for that specific folders. I don't want that all the users access all the folders, because some things need to be only for HR, or only for IT, or only for specific areas, and that's, uh, I don't want that everyone access it. But I want as well that everyone access some specific folders, or the share folders, that it's shared for everyone. And Alan, can you help me with it? And I say, yes, I can help you with it, and it's quite easy. We can only edit the permissions, and in this video, I will explain how you can modify and how you can add permissions in the TrueNAS 12 revision. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna teach it, but first, don't forget to leave your like straight away. If you forget, it's better for me. Subscribe for the channel, and let's see how to do it. Uh, I hope that you guys followed me in my last video, how I set up my TrueNAS. Basically, only to give a quick feedback what we did in our TrueNAS. Uh, the TrueNAS that I'm using is a TrueNAS 12 U4. I'm using a virtual machine to simulate this TrueNAS because I didn't want to install in a proper machine. In this virtual machine, I separate five threads and I have 10 gigabytes of run memory. Why it's 10 gigabytes of run memory? As I told in the last video, for you run well the TrueNAS, you need to have at least 8 gigabytes of run, plus 1 gigabyte for each terabyte of uh, pool storage that you have. In my case, I could have up to 2 terabytes, but I have only small hard drives. In this pool, I have uh, 3 hard drives that it's uh, set as a RAID 5. I have as well 1 SSD separate only for cache. This SSD, it's only to speed up the read and writes from this uh, pool. How it's work? Basically, all the data will be recorded first in SSD, and that's after the usage, they will be pulled back for the hard drives. What happened as well in this cache? Imagine that you have some files that you use more frequently. This system, they analyze the data that you use more frequently and it starts to migrate everything for the cache. This way, you have all the information in the cache for fast access. Okay, now we're gonna start to set up our configuration. If I come here in our storage and come here in pool, I have only one pool that I create. The name of this pool is pool really logic. And then what I'm gonna do in this pool? I will create some data sets for this one. What's this data set? Will work as a share folders. These data sets will be look like folders inside this NAS. So I can come here and add one data set. The first one I will create my first data set. I create as a shared. Why? I want to share with all the users. In the compression level we can leave this one as a standard. If, if perhaps you have different files uh, you you keep a lot of video, it's better to have a different kind of compression. If you use a lot of Excel, PDF and Office stuff, it's better all the type of compression, but if we live as EC4, it's a standard one and we work kind of okay for all the information that we have, so we're gonna leave this way. I come here and submit this one. Now I'll create my other folders. So I will have a company, a company. In this company will have the HR department, I will have the financial department, I have the engineering department, and I want to, all those have the share folders to access. So let's create our engineering department folder. Here I define as engineering department, I make the same comment, engineering, and I save. Now we're gonna create our HR department. I will come here, new data set and put HR department, same comment, and I submit, and I come here and create my last data set. I come here, data set, and I create as a financial data set, and I have the same comment, and I save it. So at the moment, I have a few folders that I create. I have the first folder for engineering, the second one's for financial, the HR, and the share folders. So before I start to edit any permissions, I will start to create my groups and users. So I come here in account, my groups, and I will create the first group. My first group will be the engineering group, so I define as a name engineering. I come here and put submit. Then I will create now the HR group. So everyone that work in HR will be part of this group for HR. HR, and I come here. 
After this one, I will create a group for financial. Fina financial group. And the last group that I will create, I will create the group for IT. So this group of IT will have access for everything. So I come here and put permit sudo. Have all this group created. Now we'll start to populate with users. I will create one user for each group. I come here in user and I create uh, my first user. First use, Bob. User will be Bob and the password, one, two, three. The same thing, one, two, three. So Bob will be pertains to uh, the engineering group. I deselect this new primary group and come here and define that Bob is part of the engineering group. So I, they have a second group, no, we, they don't have a second group. So I come here and add as a Microsoft account and some authentication and I put create. Now I create Bob. Let's create another one, I will create uh, Alan. Because I am the IT guy, so I will create that I'm part of uh, the IT group. So I come here and define as a primary group and define as IT. So I work in the IT group. Now I created the second one, uh, I don't know, financial guy, financial person, it's uh, financial name, because I'm not creating new names. So I will create the same users and password, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's the primary group will be part of uh, financial. And I come here, permit Microsoft and I Save. Last thing that is missing is the HR group. So I come here, create a user called HR because it's easy for me. And I come here and create my password, my password, and create this person for the HR. So I come here and they create HR permission and submit. So at the moment we have uh, groups create and user create. So Alan, it's IT, will have access for everything. Bob will be engineering. Then financial will be part of financial, HR will be part of HR. So we can come here in post and start to define the permissions for it. If I come here in engineering and define as edit permissions, I can define that engineering folder will have a permission for the engineering group, apply for group. I want that no one have access to see, to read, to do anything apart for the user and the group. I select the group and I apply for permissions respectively. Suppose that I have a lot of files in this folder. I have uh, uh, lots of engineering files right there. And if I don't select this one, they will have only access for the main folder, but not access for the rest of the folder. So it's pointless. This reason that I allowed it. Have this one, I come here and save. Now I'll come here back in the engineering permissions and I can see that the permissions for engineers are right applied. So I can come here and use ACR manager. Now I can define some ACLs that I can configure. I can come some standard ACLs look like open, restrict or home. What means open? Open will be everyone will be accessed. I will use it for a share because I want everyone that have a user be able to access it. If I come restrict, it means will be restricts only for the users that I give permissions. And if I have home, I'm not sure, but it's really similar for the restrict with some hierarchy difference. But don't worry about it, we're gonna select as restricted. And I come here and continue. As I stand restricted, they will appear that uh, who has access for this one? The owner of the folder and the owner of the group. So if I define that uh, the user will be root and the group will be engineering, so in this folder engineering, all, all the people from the group engineering will have access for it. But I'm not happy with it yet because I don't know if the IT people have access for it. So I will define that IT people have access from this folder. I come here and put add ACL item and I put who? A group have access and which group? I want that the IT group have access for it. What I want that they have? I want that they have a full control and the same thing for the group. I want that they have a full control for all the files inside this folder. I come here, apply for the same respectively. So every file inside this folder will be the same configuration. And I come here and continue. After this one, I will apply for permission for child data set. It means that all the sub data set inside this folder will be the same. And I come here and put save. Now we'll do exactly the same process for the financial HR 
and share folders. Let's do it. Permissions, who is the owner? Apply, I come for financial. Apply for child, yes, I want it. I remove for others and write for permissions. I save it, come back here for financial. Permissions, edit USL, I put as restrict, continue, add a new, I modify that they will have a full control for this group, add a new group, come here, group, come for IT, full control, and I apply for all the subfolders, and apply again, and save. Okay, now last thing that we're gonna do is the share folders. Here in share folders, they'll come here and edit permissions, who I want that to have. I want everyone, others and others. Apply for all and I continue. Save and I come here again, permissions and I edit UCL. This is the point that you needed to permit that all the users have access for it. To do it, we're gonna come and put open and continue. What it uh, translate? That everyone have a full control every group and everyone. It means that everyone have access for this one. I want that everyone have a full control for it. If any user come for this folder, share folder, they will able to enter it and modify and do everything that they want. Perhaps I want that only these two have access, but this one only to be able to read the files. I can define as read. Or I want that they are able for full control. I can define it. I need to select this one as well for allow that all the subfolders will be the same permission. Continue and apply for permission for all the subfiles and save. So now I define the UCL for all our folders. I define for engineering, finance, HR and share folders. Question, the users can access these folders? No, not yet. You know why? Because we didn't share it. It means that all my folders, it's great, but it's not sharing the system. So to be able to share, I come here in sharing and I come in a window share. Now we come here and put add a new share folder. I can select the folder that I want, pulls, and if you look here, all the ACL is already created. It means that all the permissions for these files is already defined. So I will first share the engineering. I need to change any parameter? No, I don't need to do any modification this stage. If I want, I can put advanced options and read what it's here. But it's enable ACL, that it's great. That's uh, Shadow Cops enable. It means that if I do a, a snapshot, they will allow it. And uh, there will be access for the share folders and everything. You don't need to change anything. If perhaps you need to be more specific information, you can change here, but in our case, it's not necessary because it will be a standard access for the folder. I come here and put submit. So I do exactly the same thing for financial. And I come here and do for the HR. And last folder that we're gonna do will be the share folders. I come here and submit. So now all these files is shared and accessible for the network. Let's try it. So I have three virtual machines open here. I'll open my first virtual machine. I come here and try to access my server with my IP address and I come here they will ask what user that we want to choose. We come here and come in account, group, and I want first to access the engineering group. So I come here, engineering, members, and I know that Bob is part of this group. So I come here and access with Bob. Bob, password123, and I access it. So I access it. So Bob is part of engineering, so I can open engineering folder, I can come here, folder modify test one and i can modify the folders if i come here in properties and i come here in security i know that the creator is owner and the group is owner that's great i come here and cancel it and try to access the financial folder and i don't have access for it i try to access the hr folder and i don't have access for it as well but i try to access the share folders and i have access for it so I have this one in mind, I will create a folder called Bob here. My second virtual machine will do exactly the same. I will open my folder with 192.168.1, my server, and they will ask, make login. So the next user that we're gonna use will be the second group, will be financial group. If I come here and manage members, 
I know that financial, it's the user financial. So I will come here in my second virtual machine and log in and one, two, three. So now I should have access only for financial part and I have access for it. I come here and create a new. I come here and create a new folder called finance, call test and I have access for it. So I have access for the engineering group. No, I don't have access. I have for HR, no, but I have for the share folder as well. And I come here and put test two, test one, and it's work. So now the last one that we're gonna try to access will be our IT guy. So now I will try to access with my IT guy to see if I can access all the files. And I put some my same IP address. I look in with Alan, that's my IT guy, one, two, three. And now with this IT guy, I have access for engineering, financial, and my share folders. And I can create any files the same way that I want to test. I come here engineering and same thing, I come here and put test and I'm able to edit any folder and I can modify anything. Okay, let's come back for our two NAS and let's say that uh, I modify a lot of uh, information in my pools. I come here in my pools. And let's say that I would find lots of information for my engineer and I really don't know what stage that I am at the moment. I don't know if which user have permission for access that folder, which user don't have a permission for that access for that folder, and I want to figure out it. What I can do, I can come here, permissions, I come here in trip ACL permissions, remove all the ACL permission for all the informations and strip it. It means that now no one have access for that folder because I return for the standard permission that will be will and root as a group and user. Then I can start to modify the same way. I can come here, permissions, and can allow permissions for the same way. Use ACL, and now the permission is basically zero. I come here, restrict, continue, and I can modify my permission from scratch. Other thing that you can do as well, you can come here in group part, and I can define others using for different groups. If I come here, manage, I say Bob and financial, it's part of the engineering group. And this financial is part for the engineering and financial group. So I can modify groups. I can define that more than one user, it's part of the group, or I can make some permissions for access limitation folders or access for more and more and more. So guys, in this video, I'm configuring the permissions that you can have in your TrueNAS. In this way, you can configure different groups, different people, or different access for different uh, situations. In this way, you are covered for any necessities for your company. If you like this video and you think that it was interesting, don't forget to leave your like. If you don't like or you think that it was pointless, leave your dislike, subscribe for the channel, and see you next time. Bye.